Welcome back everybody, I hope you're having a beautiful day today and I hope you're ready for what we're gonna read today. It's gonna be a wonderful episode today, we're gonna read some terrifying stuff and then some wholesome stuff at the end. I hope you guys are having a good day today and I hope you enjoy. The first one that we're going to read is on the Entitled People subreddit. Plane Seat Bandit Finally Happened To Me People stealing plane seats and getting told off for it are some of my favourite stories on Reddit. With the increase of plane seat bandits, most likely due to airlines almost making it a requirement to pay for seats if you want to sit next to your plane partner. I've been half expecting to run into one since me and my husband travel a lot for work. Well, it finally happened and it was fun. Me and my husband always buy plane seats towards the back of the plane. As we stroll down, we see a lady with a young son, maybe 11 or 12, sitting in our seats. They they were both deep in their phones when I told her she was in our seats. We had to wake up at 3 in the morning to drive to the airport and we didn't really sleep so I was not in the mood for BS. She smiles and tells us that they weren't seated together so the stewardess told her they could sit here. Um, she most definitely didn't. I smile back and I say that we paid for these seats so we'd like to sit there. She keeps on smiling her stiff smile and then points to the other empty seats behind us and asks if we wouldn't mind sitting in one of them since they're already settled and comfortable. Would it even matter? Well, I said yeah since the plane is still boarding so these might all be reserved and it really does mess with the system if people sit in random seats. She's starting to lose her smile and says that if there aren't seats available after the plane is finished boarding, they would move then. I'm not confrontational and I'm usually a people pleaser so I'm struggling to stand up for myself but I'm so proud for doing it anyway. Meanwhile my husband is struggling between boarding passengers to get the flight attendant. I sigh and with a half smile I say I'm sorry but I just want to sit down and not stand in the hallway blocking people to see if maybe there are empty seats when I paid for our seats. And besides I'd like the police to be able to identify our bodies by seat number in case the plane crashes and our families want to bury our remains the kid's face which has been glued to his phone the entire time shoots up in shock and he looks between me and his mum it was delicious she has a bewildered look on her face there's silence for five seconds before she packs up her stuff and pokes her son to move i keep on smiling sweetly and thank her and plop myself down as my husband returns with a flight attendant i tell her everything's fine and i tell my husband what happened we laugh and i'm pretty sure the mum heard or i hope so i didn't look back but i think i'm not mistaken for feeling laser stare in the back of my head. Luckily the flight was only three hours so I didn't need to walk past to go to the toilet. Wow that's so frustrating. You paid for the seats. Yeah this comment. I'm sorry no you not having a seat next to your son is your own problem. You will not make it my problem. I reserved and paid for the seat that you're sitting in. You can stand in the aisle waiting to see if there are any empty seats. I can't stand people that force their problems onto others. Yeah and that's a hundred percent what they're doing. Like this is your problem. Why are you making OP suffer because of it? Oh yeah because you're super entitled. Yeah that's so annoying OP. The next one's on the Am I the A-hole subreddit. Am I the A-hole for asking my stepdaughter to pay me back for my dress? I have a daughter Ava, 18 female, and a stepdaughter Mia, 22 female. Mia's mum has primary custody of her, so I only saw her for a few weekends a year growing up. However, she went to college near me and my husband, so we are a lot closer now. I have a job at a big fashion company and we get clothing for free, like if it didn't sell or sample pieces and the rest is donated. When I first started, I got a beautiful silk mini dress that I love and I've kept it in very good condition. After having having my kids, it is more of a tight fit so I usually pick something more comfortable. It fits Ava perfect and she borrows that dress all the time and it looks great on her. Mia asked me to borrow the mini dress for a wedding and I let her. She came over yesterday for dinner and showed us a picture of her at the wedding and she looked amazing but I noticed she had altered the dress. Mia is much shorter than me and Ava so the dress when she tried it on in front of me was knee length. However at the time she insisted it was fine. In the pictures it's a mini dress which is how it does sit on me and Ava. Mia admitted that she got home and preferred how it looked on Ava so got it altered. However she didn't cut the fabric off, just hemmed it up so I'd be able to get the dress back after picking up the stitches. I got upset at Mia and when she handed me the dress, it'd be very hard to get the dress back to its original state. Taking out the stitches might leave holes in the silk and the dress fits more like a long top now. I asked Mia to reimburse me for the dress and I told her I was upset that she stitched and altered it without asking me before. She said that she didn't know that she couldn't stitch silk and that it was an accident. My husband said that Mia made a mistake in asking her to reimburse me for the dress that I got for free, which at its original price is a lot more than she can afford as a college student. He said that I shouldn't have let her borrow the dress if it meant so much to me. I accounted for Mia spilling something on the dress or getting it dirty, but I don't think it was fair of her to alter it without asking me, and I can't wear it as a dress anymore. I am quite upset about the dress, so maybe asking her to pay full price is too much, but she's an adult, and it wouldn't be fair of me to treat her like a child. No, that's right, OP. Obviously, you don't borrow something and then alter it without even asking. That 100% is true, but didn't you also say that you haven't worn this dress since you've had kids, and you haven't 
18 year old daughter does that mean you haven't worn this dress in 18 years and yeah like you said you did get it for free of course Mia needs to learn that actions have consequences but I also don't really feel like she should be paying you for the full price of the dress there's got to be a better way around it surely well I don't know maybe not maybe she should pay you for it but uh, I don't know I'm trying to imagine if I were in your shoes I would make sure that she knows that that's not okay but I don't think I'd make her pay full price for the dress that I got for free that I also haven't worn in what over 10 years yeah I don't know the comments are definitely split on this one there's a lot of not the gay holes and a lot of you the gay holes there's a comment I like here that says no don't let her keep it she probably hemmed it hoping that you would give it to her yeah this bit here the punishment should be no more loans and she doesn't get to keep the dress yeah I feel like that's fair enough OP you even said that she wouldn't be able to afford to pay you back for the full price of the dress the top comment says I think this is an issue where you need to try to undo the modifications with a tailor first with Mia present ask Mia for the name of the person who altered it and go talk to them all together about how to get it back if they can get it back without any holes then problem solved if they can't then Mia needs to be there to hear that and understand the consequences of her actions the second top comment says not the yay hole she's an adult at 22 she borrowed something and through her own actions can't return it in the same condition that it was given to her common courtesy and common sense is that she replaces the item she shouldn't necessarily have to give you the cash though but she should make an effort to resolve the problem as best as possible and get you a replacement at the very least I'm kind of amazed at the cluelessness that she had it altered without asking you and then that she was going to give it back still altered asked to borrow her car and then give it back to her without doors and with a broken windshield yeah definitely Mia should not have done that but does she have to pay you the cash amount for the dress I don't know probably not but like that comment said she does need to make an effort to resolve the issue the next one is called am I the gay hole for refusing to help a friend who didn't invite me to their wedding for about 11 years now I 37 male have been pretty close to John 38 male we met at a job in my mid 20s and were pretty regular company up until the pandemic where are hanging out including a circle of mutual friends has taken a decline but it's not extinct John and his partner Jane 36 female have been together for about eight years now engaged for a little under two years both with a child from previous relationships so they have taken trips with their kids near yearly and I've been happy to help visit John's now their home and check on things and take care of their animals and stuff while they're gone I have helped them out with other projects and tasks over the years and most recently I picked up Jane from the airport when returning from a work trip and I got her home this past winter during a snowstorm because my vehicle could handle it generally I have been present and helpful on top of our base friendship about five weeks ago I find out from a mutual friend that their wedding is coming up and the invites went out a while ago everybody in our circle but me was invited as a gay guy I've experienced being iced out of some of my straight friends lives and events in ways minor and pronounced but this one's definitely something that's had me thinking about my time and my energy with people I decided I'd take the hint and begin to distance myself three days ago John texted me asking if I'm around in early to mid August I say that I am John asked if I wouldn't mind visiting like I have before to look after the animals and the property I said sorry I can't he calls to talk about it we run through the same conversation polite but a little bit tense so I finally say I just won't be visiting your home after a moment of silence I bring up that I'm disappointed that I appear to be the only person in our group of friends that isn't invited to his wedding and that I can't be helping like I have before if I'm just a background friend at this point I try to wrap up the call positively and sincerely with me wishing them a good wedding and a good trip and that maybe we can grab drinks soon Jane reaches out two days ago sending a follow-up text saying that John is upset about what I said and is upset with her because she made the final calls about the friend invites and that I'm taking this the wrong way that there's only so much capacity and that the others in our friend group have partners that took up space she adds that she hopes that I'll change my mind and help them out because it would put John's mind at ease I'm not entitled to the company of others or invitations to anybody's events but am I wrong for setting my own boundaries in response to theirs I try not to frame my friendship as transactional but they obviously want something out of me here despite them not inviting me and then avoiding even bringing it up with me until they needed help covering their honeymoon no you're not the a-hole OP and what sort of bloody excuse was that from Jane oh we're at capacity because people have partners so what they all have priority over OP nah that's whack as OP the top comment says not the a-hole what a bogus excuse if your friends need someone to check up on their animals and property when they're on their honeymoon after a wedding that you weren't even invited to they can ask another friend or family member the audacity of some people astounds me I'm a believer in putting the same energy into a friendship as you experience and OP said I don't pretend to be super savvy about wedding etiquette and I realize every wedding is different and lines have to be drawn about who can come and who cannot come but yeah my mutual friend reaching out to me to coordinate plans for our friend group during the weekend of the wedding to find out that I wasn't even invited definitely stung and felt awkward and my friend was in disbelief as well yeah and what did Jane say that she hopes you'd change your mind or something get out of here with that crap <laughs> what the hell and yeah why do they feel like they have to ask you to come look after their house yeah that's 
that's so rude, OP. And you've been very mature about it. Yeah, like this comment says, Hi, Jane, you're entitled to invite anybody you want to your wedding. So if plus ones rank above me in importance, then that's your choice. But I perform favors for people based on our level of friendship. So I will need to decline based on the level of friendship that you and John have shown to me. Have a great wedding. Maybe one of your closer friends can take care of this for you. Yeah, the audacity of Jane as well. And I'm assuming John. Like, yeah, what? All the plus ones are more important than OP? The audacity. And the fact that they expect you to do something about this. They want you to change your mind. Nah. Jane is 100% an a-hole. And I'm pretty sure John is too. Or John's not really an a-hole. And Jane is like super homophobic or something. Nah, you don't need him, OP. That's not a good friend. Yeah, this comment. Let's call a spade a spade here. Jane's excuse is flimsy. And because her excuse is so flimsy, I think she's just a homophobe. Are you John's only gay friend? And OP said, as far as I'm aware. Yeah, and the comment under that. It's not looking good for Jane. And this comment too. Not the a-hole. He expects you to be here for him. But he wasn't there for you. They couldn't find one more place. I don't blame you for being hurt. Let John find other people to check on his place and his animals. Yeah, 100%. Like, they're definitely both in the wrong. But does John want OP to come but his wife isn't letting him? Because Jane said that John was upset and she wanted OP to put John's mind at ease. Yeah, I don't know. But you're definitely not the a-hole, OP. The next one is called, Am I the a-hole for calling my daughter a problem? And by the way, this one is an Am I the Devil post. As in, they have been labelled the a-hole. I, 42 female, have a daughter named Maria, 14 female, who argues a lot. She argues with me the most. I do admit that she normally doesn't cause the arguments and that her younger brothers Kyle, 11 male, and Derek, 9 male, can be unreasonable. Yesterday, she and I argued because she wanted Derek to eat lunch before they watched a movie. Derek refused to and she told me to make him eat something healthy. He'd already eaten a chocolate bar and some cookies and I said no. She tried to watch something on her iPad because I'd promised her a movie if she did some chores. I said no. She got mad at me and called me unfair. Then I told her that she was the problem in this house and I kicked her out. She came back an hour later because she had to babysit and I wouldn't let her inside. Today I tried to talk about it and I tried to make her apologize for what she was doing. She didn't say anything rude but she tried to parent him which I have told her not to do. However she was in charge since I put her in charge of him till I got home from work at 1pm. She told me that I need to apologize for what I said and I said that she's been the problem for 14 years. Then I got rid of Safari, the app store and a few of her games and YouTube, her only social media app on her phone. She refuses to eat now because if Derek doesn't, why do I have to? She has also accused me of favoring her brothers, especially Kylo for her, and that I'm like O'Brien from 1984 by George Orwell because I constantly try to manipulate her and change her views on things while acting like I'm helping her. Am I the a-hole for calling my daughter the problem? So you were arguing with her because she wanted Derek to eat lunch before they watched a movie and she told you to make him eat something healthy and you said no and then she tried to watch something on her iPad and you said no. What did she do wrong? I'm so confused. How's your 14 year old daughter the issue in the house OP? The top comment says you are definitely the problem in the house and in your kids lives. Number one, your daughter's more mature than you. She, not you, wants him to eat something healthy because he'd eaten chocolate and cookies and you say no. She takes care of them. She does her chores and you break your promise. You're not unfair, you're pathetic. You admit that it isn't her that causes the arguments. You call Kyle 11 and Derek 9 unreasonable. Unreasonable kids come from parents who don't educate their kids and don't teach respect and limits to them. You're being a total mess as a mother and you want her to apologize. Yeah, you the a-hole. The comment under that says, you the a-hole, you're the problem. You're sending some insane mixed messages and kicked out a 14 year old child. It's unclear why you canceled all the apps, but it sounds like you're throwing a massive temper tantrum. Grow up and stop being an a-hole to your daughter. And OP said, I canceled the apps because she talked back to me and also played some games after her hour of screen time was up. Duolingo and YouTube, which she said was for research, although I think she's lying. And also this comment, if this were true, you'd the a-hole without question. Why would you even be asking? But this reads as fiction. Yeah, I was sort of thinking that as well. I don't know if it is though. I feel like every time I think a Reddit post isn't real, it probably is. But yeah, this comment too, you're kidding, right? Of course you're the a-hole. Who the hell kicks their child out for asking their brother to eat food besides cookies? You sound like a real gem, mama. Yeah, what? That was so confusing. Okay, let's read something wholesome. My dad's name is Aaron. So when I was little and he said he was going to go run errands, I heard errands and I figured that adults just called the chores they had to do by their own name. And to this day, I still secretly think of my chores as Ellie's. Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> gonna go run some Vince's. Can we please start doing that? That's so funny. The majestic land seal capable of sleeping up to 22 hours a day. Oh yeah, the land seal. God, they're so cute. <laughs> so beautiful. Thank you for watching, guys. I hope you had a wonderful time today. If you did, make sure you let me know down below in the comment section and also like and subscribe. And the comment of the day today, 
goes to Zero Felix. Time to watch Vinci read horrible stories while I recover from having three teeth pulled. Cause suffering is better when done with internet friends. Aw, oh, that's so awesome. I hope you're feeling okay after that and I hope you did recover well. I don't think I've ever had teeth pulled out, but yeah, that can't be fun. Three of them as well. But yeah, 100%. Suffering is better when done with internet friends. That's a wise quote right there. Okay, I'll see you in the next episode. Make sure you look after yourself and make sure you have a beautiful, amazing rest of your day. And you know what I'm about to say because I say it every single day. Bye!